So DIY is an awesome way to save money, learn about the equipment that you're using and educate yourself on a variety of topics involving audio and music production. Today, I'm gonna to take you through how I got into DIY, how I created the DIY recording studio and why maybe you should start your DIY journey too. So there are a lot of things in this studio that are completely DIY. There are many acoustic sound panels, microphones, mic preamps, EQs and compressors that I've built entirely on my own with the help of things like YouTube and online resources and awesome kits from DIY companies. And it's been an amazing journey to learn about this type of equipment and also get my hands on the tools and just learn in a totally different way than is typical about music production. But to explain how I got started in DIY, we need to go way back. So when I was in high school, I was super, super into music and I loved just technology in general. I loved computers. It was like the late 90s, early 2000s and I was super into home computers and video games and just technology. But I was also super into music and I wanted to just learn how to record my own music and learn how to produce music and also do sound in live environments. So I went and studied at a place that we call in Australia TAFE and TAFE is kind of like what Americans would maybe call a community college. It's where all our tradies learn how to become like carpenters and people learn all the trade skills that are involved in their industry. There are also studies in all kinds of fields like business and arts and all that kind of stuff too. So I went to TAFE to study audio. And while I was there, I actually majored in live audio engineering because I just liked gigs and liked playing shows and was super into live audio. And we had an assessment where we had to build cables and learn how to solder. So I learned soldering all the way back then in my late teens. And I built a PA system and made a lot of the cabling because it was cheaper back then to build all your own cables. And that was kind of it. That was all I did for a really long time in the world of soldering or building building anything. Much later on, I actually went back to study at university and do a degree where I majored in music production, particularly studio production. And whilst doing this degree, we had a particular core set of units around audio technology where once again, we had to learn how to solder. Now the soldering assignment we had in this class was actually building a really basic fundamental microphone from some really cheap components that you could get just from your electronics store. Now I'd been able to solder for a long time and knew a bit about equipment and kind of just wanted to push myself a little bit further and do something a little bit more challenging. So I spoke to my lecturer and asked, would it be okay if I built something a little bit more complicated just for this project? And he of course was like, go for it. And so I started researching and found a particular company called micparts.com. And on the micparts website, I found all the different microphones that they offered for you to build yourself. Now at the time, the Aussie dollar was actually above the value of the US dollar. So it was a really cheap prospect to look at buying a DIY kit that was maybe a really high quality clone or had the sound characteristics of a really high quality microphone. And I was looking to expand the microphone collection that I had into some more high-end type microphones, but being a uni student, I didn't have a lot of money at all. So the DIY thing really suited my needs at the time. So I settled on a particular microphone, the S12 from Mic Parts. It is kind of voice similar to like an AKG C414. And the C414s in Australia are just prohibitively expensive. And I wanted a pair for drums. And if one worked really well, I was going to get a pair. So needless to say, I built that microphone. It sounded awesome. I was super impressed with the quality quality of it. I got the bug and got super addicted to this DIY thing. So then I got another one, built that 
and then I started building ribbon mics and other kind of microphones as well. Now, as I was finishing uni, I was also building my own home studio space. So I needed to learn how to build walls and how to build frames and acoustic panels and all that kind of crazy stuff. So once again, through my studies at uni, I learned a bit about acoustics and acoustic treatment and spent a lot of time in our really awesome studios there and just asked shit tons of questions to my teachers about how to build a studio space and utilize that resource. And I've got a video, I'll put a link down below. You can check out the first ever studio space I built myself and you know what? It sounded great. It was this single garage and I built walls and panels everywhere and made it a really decent acoustic space. So if you're in a situation like that, you should check out that video. So by this point, I've built microphones, I've built acoustic panels, and I finished my degree and I was about to, funnily enough, go and start working as a teacher at TAFE, where I originally started studying. A different campus, but same organization. They're like a whole state-based organization here in New South Wales in Australia. And when I started working there, I was lucky enough to get my hands on some of the best preamps and EQs and compressors, things that I surprisingly didn't even get to use while I was studying at uni. Things like Neve 1073 preamps and API preamps and EQs. We had an SSL where I studied and a couple of pieces of outboard, but we didn't have anything like I actually have at my TAFE campus. And I have to tell you, like when I first used a Neve 1073 preamp, I was blown away. I was just like, oh, this is the sound. This is the sound of records. There is definitely a thing about this that I need if I want my studio to sound professional. So once again, I started diving down the rabbit hole of DIY. Was there a way I could build my own mic preamps and EQs? And sure enough, I came across companies like Sound Sculptor and Cappy and DIYRE and Link Audio and all those great ones as well. And I started to build mic preamps and EQs and then eventually compressors and it became this massive thing that I was building and I started making videos about it on YouTube as well. And that's how I got to where I am now where I build all of this crazy DIY gear. When I look back at it now, I just started out in this much smaller scope of things, just learning how to build an XLR cable and learning how to hold a soldering iron and use solder. And many years later, delved into doing microphones and PCBs for the first time and then learnt acoustics and then finally ended up building really complex complex things like compressors, like I've built optical compressors. That's insane. And I know so much more intimately how all of these things work and come together in a studio space to make amazing recordings. I understand the fundamentals of my microphones and my preamps, but also the acoustics of my room. By doing all of this DIY stuff, it has given me a really awesome, solid foundation and understanding of how all of this stuff works. So it's an amazing journey to go on and I encourage all of you at least to dive a little bit into some DIY. And it all depends on what you need. Not everyone needs optical compressors and Neve 1073 EQs. Some of you just need acoustic panels. You should definitely start first by acoustically treating your room. And I encourage you to get on the tools, get out there and have a crack at it because you will learn so much and it is so rewarding to get your hands on tools and learn how all of this stuff works. And it doesn't just end there. Since starting this channel, I've modded guitars and modded high-end pieces of audio equipment too, like DBX compressors and a bunch of other things that I have videos on really soon. And I've even built more recently my studio desk and my studio racks and I have videos on them coming really soon too. I can assure you this DIY journey is probably gonna go on forever and there's so much to always learn and so much more that we can do. So let me know down in the comment sections, do you DIY? Is that why you subscribe to my channel or are you just newly coming into DIY and looking at what the options are? If you need any help or info, either hit me up on my email, I'll put that down below, or shoot me a comment on the comment sections, or you can hit me up on Instagram, whatever's easiest for you. I hope you guys are having an amazing time on your own audio journeys. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com. I'll catch you soon.